So this week starts off with a trip to the gravel pit, kind of like I did last week. Me and Elizabeth are going to go pick up a load of river sand in order to make some concrete to fill the cells in the blocks so I can make this wall a little more sturdy in preparation for the backfill material that I'm going to be putting in here. That fill is going to be used to fill in the hole that I dug for my footer and to support the new concrete pad. So last week I had a few people comment about you know being able just to drive into the gravel pit with no orange vests, no hard hats, nothing like that. Just weigh in, drive your pickup up, pick up, up to the pile of material that you need and wait for the loader to come fill you up. That's the way I like it. Simple and easy. So really, in my opinion, what these gravel pits are doing by allowing these small pickups to come in and get a load, it's just a public service because they're not making hardly any money off the materials. Plus, you know, loading with this heavy equipment like this, probably the fuel cost uh, just from, you know, getting from one side of the site to the other to load a pickup truck up with $20 worth of sand, it's just, it's not a money maker. So I appreciate the... Uh, companies that operate like this and allow you to drive in and get a load makes me do business with these guys uh, in other areas like having gravel delivered to the house or concrete and get it all from this place here So there's 2,400 pounds of river sand. Quite a bit of weight in the back of this old pickup truck. Got a lot of stones and stuff in it, so it's not probably what you'd want to use for, for mortar between blocks and stuff because of these rocks. It's not mason sand, just standard old river sand. Perfectly fine for concrete. So this is the mix that I'm doing. It's a 3-2-1 mix. So three parts stone, two parts sand, one part cement. So nine shovels of rock, six shovels of sand, and three shovels of cement. This is OPC, or Ordinary Portland Cement. And this is the mix that the bag of cement recommends. This is the most 
ingredients I can put in this mixture at one time. I know you can't see in here probably, but this is a pretty big mixer and it's never a good idea in my opinion, at least from my experience, to mix up a really small batch in a big mixer like this. You end up with all the, all the mortar or the cement stuck to the edges of the mixer and just separates from the mix. So if you're going to mix up concrete in a big mixer, mix it in my opinion full. This is the stuff you want to keep. Smack the shovel on the front of the mixture. Not all wives will voluntarily clean out your concrete mixer. Looking pretty good. I am grouted at every other cell, every cell that has rebar in it, all the way around. So that should be plenty good enough for any pressure this thing's going to see, you know, against uh, the backfill or the flowable fill anyway. All this got to be cleaned out, kind of get the loose stuff out of here. And what this flowable fill will do is just conform to the sides of the trench and keep me from having to, you know, compact dirt in here, which would be really hard to do in this trench. Plus, it'll allow me to have a good flat uh, surface to, hopefully, if eight yards is enough to fill this, to uh, set my scaffolding on. So I'll give you a look down in here, show you what I've done. Here's one, anyway. I've just grouted up about halfway up the rebar, which comes to probably the bottom part of the pad, or the bottom level of the pad. And I've left I don't know, plenty of rebar exposed there. For the second pour that'll go in here, um, I have to basically anchor in my uh, 
wet set my concrete anchors that'll go in here that the wood that plates this will bolt to so i'm definitely not done but uh i'm done enough for uh for what i need to so i can move forward for now anyway I'm gonna nudge you. Yeah. Trying to hide your hand if they do nuts. Like her back rubbed. She loves mama petting her. No. Creepy little squid. Look, chew daddy. Don't chew on me. It's skin now. <laughs> so in the last video I showed using a piece of broken block to knock off all the high spots. I think a few people misunderstood exactly what I was doing. I only showed knocking it off on the upper parts of the block. But what I've been using this for primarily is to knock down all the high mortar off the joints. It really makes them look quite a bit better. Just rub it. You gotta do this within the first day or so. Before the mortar gets really hard. See that joint there? I should have done this yesterday. It just looks better. That's all. Just knocks off all those little dingleberries that are left on the joints after you rake them. better when you're done. So in preparation for my backfill material, I have to make sure I don't have any large voids for this stuff to flow through. And right now I've got two large open areas between my footer and my block at each step, one on the front, one on the back, that I have to fill. I'm going to use mortar to do that before this stuff uh, shows up. Otherwise it'll just run out of that crack and around the building. And I don't want that. I want it on the inside where it's most important. Let me show you. We'll mix up some mortar and uh, <laughs> block these off. So I knew these were going to be here when I formed up this footer. Uh, like I said before, I wanted to make sure at least I had a half block there, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to do any block cutting other than a half blocks. Not that it made any difference in the world. I could have just formed this up to where these two made it up and it wouldn't have had an issue there, but, you know, that's hindsight. So this has got to be filled, so let's mix up some mortar and fill that up, or else all that backfill, or backfill material that I pour on the inside will just run out and around the building here. So I've got a half a bag of this quick creep mortar mix that I ended up not using on this building, and we can use it to fill these voids. I started off trying to use this between the blocks, and it worked fine. But the sand in this was a little coarser than the Quick Creek Pro Finish in the green bag that I've been using. Plus, this comes in 60-pound bags, where the other stuff comes in 90-pound bags. And uh, I just liked the, the the bigger bag. It was just a little cheaper when you come to you know, quantity. So we use this stuff. There's nothing wrong with it. Just uh, I don't like it as well as the Pro Finish. 
like about the uh, Quick Creek Pro Finish versus just the Quick Creek Mortar Mix uh, is this stuff here. Just the Mortar Mix doesn't have as long a working time as the uh, Pro Finish did. Making mortar pancakes. There's that side. Finish the other side. This doesn't have to be pretty. It's all going to be underground. Now when that sets up, that'll have no problem holding back that uh, fuel material. So I had a commenter in my last video ask how in the world I've kept this wheelbarrow so clean while mixing mortar in it. I've mixed every bit of mortar that I've used on this job in this wheelbarrow, and it's still relatively clean. I mean, it's got some mortar stuck to it, but it's not bad. What I do is I mix up my mortar in the wheelbarrow. I immediately scoop it out into the tray that I take to the section of the wall that I'm working. And then I dump half the water that I'm going to use for my next mix of mortar into the wheelbarrow and use a brush and just try to brush it down so it dilutes that cement in the mix enough to where it doesn't stick. At least it doesn't stick that well anyway, and it's a lot easier to clean. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people don't worry about it, and their wheelbarrows will have mortar in it a two inches thick that you got to beat out with a hammer. But the reason why I'm so particular about this is that I can still hear my dad saying, don't you let concrete dry in my wheelbarrow when I borrow it or use it. <laughs> And I guess that kind of stuck with me. Um, and he said, also, don't you throw rocks in it. Beat it all to pieces. He's particular about his stuff. He's had the same wheelbarrow now for, I don't know, before I was born. And uh, it's still good and serves him well. And I'll probably have this one for a long time, too. This wasn't a cheap one. It was like, it's over $100 for this. I want to keep it at least, you know, good enough to use. Are you inspecting too? Are you hungry? Come here. You want some some peanuts? What do you want me to do with them? Did she bring them out here or not? Come here. Come on. Does that look good? It looks strong to you? Take a look. Think it'll work? I think so. Let me find you some peanuts. So in my last video, I had a couple of people say, Steve, you look tired. And I am. But I've been tired for quite some time, and it's just a little tired. i got too much to do to be too tired. My dad needs his bobcat back. He's got a job that he's got to do at uh, his place. I haven't used it in a month or so, so i got to take that back to him. I'm done with it for now anyway. The only time I can see myself using it is to spread out this gravel. I can't use it inside the building or anything, so I'm going to load it up, put it on the trailer, and uh, take it back to him.
where these light trucks really fall short is they don't have the brakes that the heavier trucks have. You know, your trailer brakes are working, that's great. But if they're not, you know, your truck now has to stop itself and the load that's behind it. I've had similar trucks to this pulling loads that I probably shouldn't. Down big hills, trying to keep things slow. Just the brakes get so hot they stop working and the wheels are all smoking. Not advisable, but they're just not capable of stopping big loads. in the back. Look at these tomatoes. Looking pretty good. Dad went through and staked all these today with the intention of when they get bigger tying them up so they don't lay on the ground and rot. And the beans. And zucchini back there. Corns down in the bottom. Yeah. Did it rain here? Did it rain here? No. It rained at the house for probably 30 minutes, 45 minutes. No rain. Yeah. 
Hey, Granny. Hey. You didn't need it to haul that stuff up? Huh? You didn't need it to haul that stuff up? I may need it in the future, but I don't need it right now. Oh. Buddy, did you I got plenty to keep me busy. People stealing them so bad. Yeah, oh yeah. Trailers don't they don't last long if they're parked out in the open no. where somebody can get hold of them. I get it. that ball's yours too. That, that whole hitch. Yeah. Oh shoot. Yeah, that's only only ball I got. That's Is he two here? and five, six mm -hmm. So I'm out here looking over a set of clamps that were sent into the channel. These were sent to me by Demod. It's an American company, so it's also a father and son company. They didn't ask for a review. They didn't ask for a video on these. I just figured some of you guys would be interested in seeing them because these do have some pretty neat features that uh, other clamps don't have. Now this is a quarter inch series clamp, which is not even available to the public yet. Uh, according to the literature, they're going to be available on the 14th of July. And these are going to sell for about 39 bucks a piece, uh, so the paperwork says anyway. Now, I thought that these were neat because you can pull the jaws out of them. They're not riveted in like a lot of other clamps that are similar to this. And I really think that uh, some of us could probably benefit from, from that feature because you could put any jaw in here you wanted. You could even make wide jaws for these, like if you're clamping up the seam of sheet metal to weld or something like that. Or you had a custom job on a production run where you have to clear a rivet or something you could make you know any jaw you wanted just an idea i was thinking about sitting out here looking over the paperwork these are impact rated so they're obviously fairly confident with the threads that they have on their hardware here because repeated use with an impact can be hard on stuff so you know they're probably pretty good there's a right hand and a left hand thread on this central rod which makes opening and closing these real quick and I can imagine it'd be real quick with an impact. This handle's removable. So if you do use an impact on that, you don't remove body parts from that thing whipping around. But a nice clamp, definitely a nice design as, as well. Now these came with steel jaws installed, but they also came with an aluminum jaw for each clamp. I guess for just sensitive stuff. So you don't scratch your work up. Now these are come with let's see or come up to 12 inches i think yeah, up to 12 inches yeah that's a big clamp this is the hd series which you can tell obviously heavier design and then that's a five inch clamp so imagine that clamp being 12 inches that'd be a monster i'd like to get a hold of a couple of those actually so pretty neat. I'm a fan of clamps, just clamps in general. <laughs> see clamps, mill table clamps, drill clamps. If I pick them up, if I see them at a yard sale or at a good deal, I'll pick them up. I'm just a fan of clamps. I don't know why. Probably some of you guys are as well. I really like old sea clamps. Uh, but I also like uh, clamps uh, that are you know, uniquely designed. And these are pretty neat, so... 
check them out if you're interested. That was pretty nice of them to send me these, just for my opinion anyway. There's their social media info. Man, these mosquitoes are eating me up. Check that out quick before I get chewed all to pieces. So thank you, Demide. I definitely appreciate that. It was really nice of you. And uh, once I can work in the shop instead of on the shop, we'll actually run these through through their paces. Well guys, that, that's it this week. I'm starting to seal the outside of the wall here. How necessary that is, I don't know. I'll show you more about it next week. Uh, show you the product that I'm using, maybe the technique that I'm using to lay this stuff down. It's been a tough week, that's for sure. Grouting this wall solid, or not solid, every other cell uh, was a lot of work. But, you know, I'm trying to save the money that I would have spent by having this, having a truck show up, having a pump show up to use it on the flowable field because I believe that you know I gotta take this project as far as I can with the money that I have so I'm trying to you know, not spend it on just the time saving things like grout in this wall but on the more important things to me like the field that's underneath this pad because it's important to me that you know that be be done professionally anyway so that's it thanks for watching guys I really appreciate it Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, anybody who supported me on this project, because <laughs> it's a big one. And uh, that's it. Send me an email if you need anything. Click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time.